Ahoy, you groovy people. Welcome aboard. Let's uh, take another look at food deserts in Knoxville. This is the Food Policy Council's map they have published currently, and we're comparing it to the old map that uh, Knoxville's Metro Pulse magazine uh, published in 2011. Both are from the same source, the United States Department of Agriculture. Um, looks like a whole swath through uh, the northern half of Knoxville has uh, been eliminated from the food desert map. And we're going to take a look at the just two areas, two areas that it's kind of surprising that they've all of a sudden uh, gotten better food access than the places that are still showing in green. And now this says that um, there's a large number of people who do not have vehicle access and they're more than half a mile from a supermarket. However, those green blotches correspond to a legend that says they are more than one mile from a supermarket. Now here I go down the Western Avenue and I'm making a left onto Keith Avenue like the uh, route just shown. Um, and just a reminder, a couple of the items that make a place a food desert are, uh, according to the Department of Agriculture, and since uh, the Knoxville Food Policy Council is merely uh, parroting, well, maybe they're not parroting. Maybe they actually took a look through here like I'm doing, and uh, they found something I didn't. You can either increase the income of the average household in this census tract to above 80% of the median income for the region or the state. Or you can put a supermarket in and uh, mere grocery stores do not count. The supermarket has to be a place that carries uh, the regular grocery store items plus they uh, also have to do two million dollars worth of uh, business in a uh, annual period. And I'm coming down here. Um, didn't get a good view my first pass, so I went around the block. And uh, here's a supermarket. At, I believe this used to be an IGA. And uh, in the background is Western Heights uh, Government Housing. Um, I'm not sure how much of the rest of these homes are government, but they most look private. Um, this is, oh, by the way, that last supermarket is not shown on any Google map. You have to find it yourself. This one was one I did not physically drive by. I had to find a picture of it. I'm not sure if they do $2 million worth of business. Now I'm continuing down Beaumont Avenue to uh, the next uh, area where Google Maps showed that there was a uh, grocery store. Yeah, well, see, uh, yeah, I'd hate to see what this place looked like when it was a food desert because uh, the Food Policy Council says that uh, this lap of luxury that we have, that you see passing by you on both sides is they no longer have a problem finding good, fresh produce at a reasonable price. Here's a little store. They, uh, I'm not sure, uh, I didn't go in. I'm not sure what kind of a selection they have. It's not very large. I want to take a wild guess that they do not do uh, $2 million worth a year in uh, sales of anything. But they could be modest. They might just like having the, uh, the cozy look. And going around the little block that it sits on, and uh, that's Beaumont again in front of you. With that mansion. And uh, this is a shuttered uh, gas station. I do not recall what they used to sell there. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've never actually been into that store. Just uh, under 500 feet away are a couple more stores. 
let's see if they look like supermarkets. Two million dollar a year supermarkets. Well, I can tell that their gas is a little cheaper than mine. Mine was three dollars and forty five cents a gallon. Uh, just a few miles from here in West Knoxville, um, Paper Mill Road area. Um, I recorded all of this video yesterday. Today is the uh, 3rd of June. This is today's, the, of course, the day that I'm uh, narrating this. Here's another gas station. Uh, has a little market with it. Sometime few years ago, I believe I was in this store. I don't think they're doing $2 million worth of business in anything either. Okay, now I'm going to go up to another one of the stores that was shown on Google Maps. As a matter of fact, every single store shown here that shows up on Google Maps has a different name when it was on Google Maps. Uh, we're on our way to Vinny's Market in Delhi. And uh, we have to go up Elm to Virginia and make a left and go to Virginia and Lonsdale Pike. You know, here's some modest homes through the area. Um, That is some kind of government transportation facility. I don't recall if it's city or county. Uh, as a reminder, this is no longer a food desert according to the Knoxville and Knox County Food Policy Council. The Food Policy Council has six board members appointed by the county mayor and five board members appointed by the city mayor. A uh, little while, a little farther into the video, um, we're going to see where one of the city appointees, um, former, uh, former board member, used to work, or still works as far as I know, is the facility where he works is surrounded by X food desert. A recovered food desert. And here we come upon Vinny's. And I forgot the name that it had before. I think Anna's or Anna's or something like that. Anyway, it's Vinny's now. That is uh, Lonsdale Pike to the right. And here we go to Western Heights. Um, talk about false advertising. It's in the uh, bottom of the valley. Just about and it's called the Heights. This is a government housing project. You saw it from the other side earlier at the first supermarket that uh, we looked at. And uh, this is where all the people on housing assistance, or many of the people on housing assistance, live within this tract, this, within this census tract. Those are all the folks that all of a sudden uh, between 2011 and 2013, suddenly got access to a supermarket. Now, if you see that big empty area above, uh, straight ahead of you there, um, that wouldn't be a bad place to put a Walmart in a Publix if uh, you know this uh, all this jazz about the uh, White House spending $400 million a year on uh, on this so-called problem. 
but but hey you don't need anything else here they've got everything they need because between 2011 and 2013 the USDA declared this no longer a one mile food desert and uh, the food council agreed now this is uh this is a route to the next store uh, I didn't exactly follow that route. You can get there easily either way. Heading down a Lonsdale Pike. I don't think we're technically in Lonsdale yet. I uh, Lonsdale, the portion at least north of Tennessee Avenue, uh, is still considered a food desert. It was. It's the uh, area to the immediate north of this tract that's still colored green by the United States Department of Agriculture. And uh, the Knoxville, Knox County uh, Food Policy Council agrees with them. In September of 2013, they published the USDA map, and uh, it still has... 20 food deserts, which correspond to the 20 uh, green colored census tract areas that are, 20 of them are green colored. And in the uh, Metro Pulse map, there were also 20 in 2011. Some of them just merely moved, really. One of them moved to the area uh, of downtown west that I covered in my first video on this. It's kind of amazing that a uh, area that was not a food desert, speaking of the downtown west area, uh, the area was not a food desert in 2011. In 2012, a Trader Joe's was uh, added and uh, started opened, started doing business, and by 2013, that tract was declared a food desert. And Food Policy Council agrees because they published the uh, USDA map that showed them as a food desert. Uh, that was my first driving tour of this, where I showed you, uh, I think, five grocers in that, that food desert. This recovered food desert doesn't have five uh, five grocers of uh, any any big note. I'm sure they're all fine, nice business people. Um, and oh, nothing says prosperity like a used tire store in your recovered food desert. Uh, this grocery store it might technically be outside of of the uh, recovered area. Uh, this might actually, uh, everything you see off in the background is actually still considered a food desert. That's the, te that's properly the Lonsdale area. And uh, a couple edits in here because I went driving all over the place looking for a actual supermarket and uh, didn't find one, but it made for some boring video. If you think I missed one, if you think I missed a Kroger's or something, feel free to point it out to me in the comments for the video. And I'm running down this road through this this reformed food desert. This is Cisco Knoxville. This is their main Knoxville operation. One of the Food Policy Council guys works there, or at least that's how he's listed with the Food Policy Council. He, I don't know if he's continuing to serve. If, uh, if somebody has not been appointed by the end of his term, uh, he would, con he could continue to serve if he so chose. I guess he's pretty proud of this. Um, and if you're wondering if maybe he shows up to work uh, coming from the other side of the building, that's also a recovered food desert area. Here is the uh, the Food Council's uh, website 
showing showing their people um and oddly they're they're not um they're not cheering or uh beat or patting their own back about this uh this recovery that they made in this area Liz uh is the uh person who published the uh federal food map to their website and talked about the twenty still existing food deserts. She didn't make any mention of them moving around or why they moved around. Um, she's a Metropolitan Planning uh, Commission representative for the uh, Food Policy Council. This is just giving an overview of the area on the way back to Western Avenue. We can take a look at the next area. Apparently some folks are moving over here. It was a pretty hot day for a moving day. interesting thing about this uh, none of these people are cut off from the surrounding area if if you need Knoxville Com Knoxville Knox County Community Action Committee bus service if you're in need they will pick you up and take you to a supermarket or I usually see them at the convenience stores and drop you off for whatever you need and uh, they'll pick you back up there's another one uh, I keep forgetting the name of it uh, ETHRTA I think something like that East Tennessee Regional Transit Authority I'm uh, not sure what the name uh, the name is but they do roughly the same thing the lady who made the uh, map for uh for the food deserts of Knoxville for the Food Policy Council told me in an email that the Knoxville Community Action Committee buses or CAC are underfunded. Can't say the nature of the underfunding. Uh, I wrote to them directly too and uh, asked about their underfunding and uh, didn't get any details about. How many people were refused rides to the grocery store due to this uh, um, underfunding claim? Uh, here's that uh, large empty area. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you put a farm there, it would not dent the food desert status. But then again, since this is wiped off the food desert map, you don't need to put a supermarket there anymore, do you? Nope, don't need to, you know, court anybody with better zoning or any of that jazz. Like, uh, or, you know, get the same stores as in downtown, the downtown west food desert to come over here. And I'm driving through, straight through Western Heights. Again, this is the government housing area. Perhaps in the future, all workers will live in government housing like this. And that's apparently a way to eradicate a food desert. These have been around for many, many years. I'm, I'm not sure when they. Uh, I'm not sure when they first came to be. But apparently, it's uh, something the government likes to have likes to have around 
Well, especially since you can get rid of a food desert uh, that surrounds it. Now, there's a young lady on her way to... Um, she's walking in the direction of that first store that we saw. That's what we'll be passing in a moment. And some more view of the recovered food desert area. Back on Tom's Street, the other side of Beaumont was where I shot the video about the front of the store. And we're going to make a right on Beaumont and somewhere before Western Avenue, it becomes Heath Avenue again. And uh, returning back from whence we came, you can see, you know, you can see how the uh, the median income in uh, this area lives. May you know maybe a whole bunch of rich people moved in someplace that I don't. Uh, I don't see, and that raised the average to above 80% of the median. And the other, the other theory would be that somebody stuck a supermarket in this area, and I just didn't find it. You know, anything is possible. And here we are approaching Western Avenue again, and uh, I did not need to be in that lane. Thank goodness nobody was behind me. And uh, let's take a trip down Western to Mechanicsville. Trying to, here we go. Let's get the information for Mechanicsville. See, it's not colored green or, I don't have the orange checked, but neither did the city. And, uh, well, uh, according to the legend, things might be uh, a little different than what the map appears. But who am I to argue with a uh, highly educated master's or Ph.D. who has an iPad and a finger paint program to make maps with. Now here we go, both sides of the street, recovered food desert. You can just sense all the joy, all, all the happiness. All the food security. Food security is a big deal with these uh, food deserts. The first lady talks about food insecurity on a regular basis almost as much as she talks about arugula. Uh, actually, the um, uh, recent post on knoxfood.org mentions uh, food insecurity. Ah, there's a food city. Now that definitely, absolutely qualifies as a, a uh, supermarket. And it is over 1.2 miles away from that housing project I showed you earlier. So there must be another one hidden around here somewhere. I'm not sure how many of these houses are government houses. Because the uh, Knoxville public housing folks have houses that look like this listed as being back over in... Um, in the Western Heights area, and uh, I think that's just where the office is, where you go to apply to live in one of, one of the subsidized houses, but when you click on their website for Mechanicsville, uh, what you get is an address back there at Western Heights with picture, a picture of a house that looks like it's in this neighborhood. But as you can see, all the nice stuff is over there right by the uh, supermarket. Uh, one of the things, though, the uh, supermarket's across a big road. And I uh, read somewhere, not on any of the uh, official sites, but the uh, issue of having to cross a business road to get to the supermarket uh, adds to the, uh, to the access issue. Anyway, here we go. Uh, 
recovered food desert on both sides. Yeah, everybody, uh, uh, no food anxiety here. The bureaucrats uh, say that you know this is this is all hunky dory, just fine. According to uh, the FDA, well, actually, no. According to our locals, um, since they only are interested in the green areas uh, on the on the food desert map, this is identical to the premier uh, area food-wise as uh, Sequoia Hills, which is one of our uh, premier communities, high, very high-income folks, and everything. And uh, they don't have a single supermarket in their area, but under no version of the map is it ever colored as a food desert. And uh, coming up here, we're about to pass into a, a different recovered food desert area. This is not a food desert. No need to fear. No need to worry. Continuing on. These are somewhat new. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, these these homes here on the right are uh, subsidized government, or just plain government, or or if they're actual private condos or not. Okay, going to make a right right here onto Gay Street. Coming up on the right is CARM, or the Knoxville Area Rescue Ministries. They minister to homeless people. And uh, thank goodness those homeless people are not stuck in a food desert. Okay, coming through here. You'll note the difference between the areas is like night and day because I am entering a food desert now. Hold on to your stomachs. Traveling South Gay Street. The Tennessee Valley Authority. Uh, National Headquarters is up there on the upper right on your horizon. Good thing that they uh, located inside a food desert so they can see how the other people live. West Jackson Avenue. See, these people suffer through uh, restaurant after restaurant along this street without any supermarkets. And uh, as you can see, Little or no vehicle access. No, oh, this is just just a terrible, terrible situation. Okay, we're getting to the heart of the downtown. We're in the inner city, the depths of the inner city. Notice all the strife and agony through here. People can barely walk across the street. Poor waifs. And valiant lawyers and bankers put their offices in this area. Oh, that poor, poor woman. Oh, um, uh, this is the public trolley that uh, 
um, according to Metro Pulse, uh, you shouldn't really have to uh, rely on that for going to and from a grocery store or the city buses. They didn't mention anything about CAC or that other bus service, but, you know, the uh, Metropolitan Planning Commission representative said that they're underfunded, so that's that. Um, I'm not sure if what the com underfunding complaint means that they don't have Mercedes-Benz buses or or what the issue is uh, since they didn't respond to a follow-up email. And the CAC people didn't respond to any email. Now here we go down West Clinch Avenue. You'll notice the flop house uh, will come up here on the right. Oh, there's a surveyor probably looking for food. Everybody knows that the Hilton, uh, the Hilton only locates uh, in the trashiest parts of town. And they have a lunch buffet just rubbing it in the face of these people, uh, these people trapped in the food desert. That is, uh, that red shiny brick building on the right is at the University of Tennessee Convention Center. Oh, um, an area that uh, was to the right most of this downtown journey is called Market Square. If uh, maybe the Metro Pulse people, when they were talking about $6 a gallon milk, were talking about what you find in Market Square, because I'm pretty sure uh, imported virgin yak milk is probably cost a pretty penny. Now, there's another surveyor looking for food. Somebody fleeing the area on foot, I'm sure they're looking for food too. Coming up on Cumberland Avenue, this is the uh, a little farther down, it's known as the Strip. It goes through the uh, University of Tennessee campus. We're leaving one food desert here very soon and we'll be entering another one. The next food desert down the road is uh, where the sorority and fraternity houses are trapped. Thank you for spending the time to watch this video.